Welcome back to our channel. It's been an early start this morning. We're on our way to the center of Bangkok to uh, visit a few temples, uh, see some religious sites that you don't usually see in the touristy side of Bangkok. So come along with us, see what you think, and uh, we'll show you the sites. So already this is a significantly different part of Bangkok. We've usually been around tall skyscrapers, tall hotels, busy metropolitan areas. But now we've came to more of the Buddhist religious part of Bangkok. Um, it's very calm, very quaint, it's quite nice. Um, I'll give a quick pan, you won't see much till we get there, but you can already see the, the spires of the temples and the nice multicolored roofs. So already quite a vast change from what we've seen previously. So we're looking forward to seeing what this part of Bangkok has to offer. So James um, only had shorts with him, so he's gone and got himself some sexy elephant pants. So they are strict on the clothing you need to wear. Um, to be respectful to their religion, you need to have your shoulders and your knees covered. So that's why we had to get James some elephant pants. Nice tight fitting trousers. Yeah, we got them from outside the temple for 150 baht. So the first temple on our tour is called Wat Fo. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it or not, but um, yeah, that was 200 baht entry, so we'll take you around with us and let you know what we think. So this is a map of the place, looks like a pretty big complex. Just viewed a giant Buddha here in the temple. Um, have to take your shoes off before you can stand inside and walk about. Um, very calm, incense in the air, very nice. Crazy how intricate all of these buildings are. I'll zoom in on one for you. All that detailed, colourful tiling. I think this is the kind of main part. Look at this. So detailed. Beautiful. So behind us is King Rama the Tenth. You'll find his portrait all over Thailand. Um, they have one of the strictest laws in the world regarding criticizing the royal family, so you'd never see such thing happen here in Thailand. But, um, as soon as you land in, you'll see a massive picture of him on one of the buildings. As soon as you leave the airport, um, and then from there on in, you'll see portraits of him and the royal family all over the roads and people's houses and shops and restaurants so if you come to Thailand expect to see um, severe worship of the royal family here. Look how amazing these are. So they've got a small heritage museum within this temple so I'll show you a bit of that so there's three types of statues here in the temple also there's human beings animals and things human beings being kings queens saints 
people of royalty and religion, um, animals being your lions, your dogs, uh, and various other creatures, and then your things being just kind of lampposts and waterfalls and anything doesn't fit the first two categories. So you've got a good uh, sight of different types of uh, creations here. Very artistic, very beautifully done. And you'll see here there's plenty of gold uh, painted Buddhas. And if you were to come to the museum, you'll see plenty of uh, Chinese, English, and Thai descriptions of what different parts of the monastery represent. So, some more history regarding the name of this temple. Wat Fo actually translates to the temple of the bonsai tree. So, that'll make sense why there's so many bonsai trees around uh, here. Notice when you come to um, the Wat Pho temple here in Bangkok, there's a lot of Buddhist statues and various exercise poses. Um, these were um, back during King Rama I's era, um, and then come King Rama III, a lot of them were weathered and damaged, so they were uh, a new set were um, ordained to be created. Um, but you'll find that a lot of them are destroyed or stolen, so they are worth significant value. But you can find a few here in this temple, um, kind of like a, a Where's Wally type situation if you're back in the UK, but I guess a Where's Buddha um, would be more appropriate. So keep an eye out for them, and if you see them, let us know in the comments. Here are some of the statues that James was talking about. Um. So here's some famous politicians that have visited the temple. Another significant figure. So as you can see, this is the reclining Buddha. Because it's so busy here, they've given everyone bags to keep their shoes in so they don't get lost. Because uh, there's another sign of respect, you need to take your shoes off before you go in any temple. It's hiding behind all the pillars, so uh, it doesn't quite do it justice but on video, but it's huge. So you can see better from this angle. So we're on our way to the ordination hall, which you can see over there on the right hand side. Very large building. So we'll see what's inside. So we believe this is the ordination hall. Uh, looks like you can get in down the bottom, so we'll go see if we can get inside. So you're going to see some footage of mainly Thai and Chinese nationals who follow the Buddhist religion praying inside to the Golden Buddha. Um, very calm, very peaceful. It's quite nice actually sitting down and Stay away from the bustling noise of Bangkok in general. Um, one thing I would say, if you're going to come to any of these temples, wear shoes that you're not uh, too worried about losing. Um, there are plenty of signs saying watch out for pickpockets. So if you've got a nice pair of running shoes that are perfect for backpacking, maybe leave them at home and bring your flip-flops. Some of the buildings here do have shoe bags, not all of them. Can't vouch for all the other temples, but just maybe a word of warning, leave the expensive trainers at home. We've stopped in a restaurant for some lunch now after leaving Wat Pho. Uh, James got some pad thai and I got a thai salad. 
We're now uh, going to head off to the Grand Palace. It was shut this morning for some uh, ceremony, I think. We'll go find out anyway and we'll take you along. Currently on route to the Grand Palace. Um, if only you could feel the heat that we're experiencing right now. Very humid, very warm, so hopefully there's plenty of shade inside here. But we're excited to see the Grand Palace and let you lot see as well um, what you can do in Bangkok. You'll see behind me we have the Ministry of Defence building here in Bangkok. Very grand building, they obviously take the defence pretty seriously. And as mentioned earlier, another image of King Rama X behind us. Uh, one of many in this area, we're quite close to the Democracy Monument. Um, which is uh, over that way, uh, not too far. So, yeah, behind us also is the, the Grand Palace, uh, which we're about to venture into. So, a lot to see in this part of Bangkok. So, we're in the Grand Palace, but we've had to switch over to mobile because there's a sign saying you're not allowed uh, GoPros and you're not meant to be videoing. So, we'll see how much footage we can get. So we've just bought our tickets for 500 baht. It shows you here what it includes. So it includes entry into the Grand Palace. Uh, you're able to visit some museum and then to go see some dance. So we'll see if we can do that today. It's stunning here. So we're sitting in front of an aircon machine because it's so warm outside. So the Grand Palace was built in 1782 by King Rama the First when he ascended the throne. This house is all royal halls, uh, royal sculptures, artwork, and government ministers and offices. Um, the original Grand Palace is on the other side of the Chao Phraya River. It was deemed too unsuitable. So it's been moved across the here since the 1700s, and it's been located here ever since. And it's now a massive uh, tourist hotspot in Bangkok. And you can tell why it's been a grand building. There's a lot to do, but as Selena said, it's crazy warm. So we're sitting in the shade by an air conditioning unit for the time being to be cool down a tad. The decor here is crazy. Look at these statues. And how intricate the building is. Look at these funny statues. Not sure what they're about. I'm guessing this is the main part of the palace. It's like the biggest temple anyway. We'll see if we can get inside. So behind us was another area of prayer and meditation. Uh, this time you're actually allowed to film or any photography, so no images this time. But quite similar to the last place, uh, a few monks in here prayed this time, which is quite cool to see. Um, my elephant trousers I purchased specifically for today's trip ripped when I went down to sit, so. That was 150 baht down the drain, but thankfully it's not too much money. Here you see a gardener uh, trimming one of the many bonsai trees in the complex. So we're now going into the museum that's part of the ticket, so we can show you around there. So that's us just left the museum. We couldn't film anything. There was lots of signs saying no photography or filming. So we've just arrived at the theatre as part of our ticket.
bike for a few hours. Um, it's been an extremely hot day, so we've been sitting inside a bar. Nice cold beer, air conditioning, perfect to cool us down. But we're now off to get a water taxi. Uh, we're going to cross the river and we're going to go to the Wat to run the temple. Um, but yeah, the water taxi is meant to be five baht, which is um, about 15 pence, so extremely cheap. Um, but yeah, come with us on the water taxi and we'll show you the new temple. So we have just arrived at Wat Arun Temple. Uh, the boat was five back across. A little skip across the river, thought it might, might have been longer, but um, it was absolutely fine. 100 baht each into the temple with a free bottle of water, so that doesn't go amiss, especially how hot it is. But um, temple is magnificent, really calm, really idyllic. Um, I'll show you a quick uh, image here. So you can just see the peak, but we'll get closer. Um, a lot of fine, elegant dressed people here right now, so it must be some sort of photo shoot. Um, but like I said earlier on, uh, fireworks are coming at 9pm, so maybe go get a bit of bite to eat before we go watch the fireworks, as we've still got maybe five hours till that happens. But um, yeah, we'll show you more of the temple now. is the Wat Arun Temple. Yeah, We're going to go see if we can actually get inside. Uh, we've seen some people over the fence, so I'm sure we can. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but there's loads of people dressed to the nines getting photos. Um, not sure if it's going to have to do with fireworks later on, but we'll find out. backdrop here the temple is unbelievable um, as you can see every intricate detail um, architecture is fantastic definitely worth a trip here if you ever come to Bangkok um, 100 bats about two pound fifty boats 15 pence um, for a day out definitely worthwhile go here and it's all blocked up to the top still a great view it's nice to take in you can see the business district in the, in the background um, so it's actually quite a clear day in comparison and everyone's quite aggressive to get photos uh, still need to find out what's going on but we've been shoved off a few pedestals already for someone to try and get a photo, so once we find out what's going on, we'll let you know. Look, you'll see everyone posing at all angles of this temple, monument. Very interesting. I can't get over the intricacy of these buildings. They're really remarkable. What kind of detail does that? Beautiful.
So we've left Wat Arun and got the boat back over to the other side and we have come across a really cool rooftop bar so it's pretty expensive but well worth it for the view so we're just waiting on our cocktails to arrive so this is the view So in summary, we went to the Wat Pho Temple, we went to the Grand Palace and we finished off the day at uh, Wat Arun, uh, which we're now looking over, overlooking after checking out for the night, with a nice glass of wine and a nice cocktail. So thanks for watching the video and we will catch you in the next one.